As I mentioned, time to go to film school. Bring in our good friend Joe Ford tonight. We're going to film school with film professor Joe Fortunato with us on 93.5, 1590 WAKR. And today we go back to 1977 with the release of Star Wars. And Joe, that's enough intro, my friend. Where do you want to start with Star Wars? Well, let's start with the basics. Uh, Good morning, Ray. And uh, we've got a big one today. And uh, Star Wars was released on May 25th, 1977. So we're actually celebrating its 45th anniversary this last couple of weeks. Uh, Hard to believe, but probably few movies in history have made such an impact as Star Wars. Uh, It's number 13 on the AFI 100 list. It won six Oscars. Most of them were technical, uh, but it did win Best Score for John Williams. It was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, and such. It had an estimated $11 million budget, which is pretty low, but even by those standards at the time, it went on to gross over $300 million, uh, domestically, and that's the first movie ever to make it over the $300 million mark. And one more sort of point to show how, how big it was, uh, it's actually the second most attended movie of all time in North America with 178 million tickets sold. Um, they, uh, that would equate to about a billion and a half dollars in wow. ticket prices today, the only movie to have more tickets sold is Gone with the Wind. Wow. You know, Joe, that was the first movie I recall that I ever went to the movie theater twice to see the movie with Star Wars. Well, it's funny you say that because I ended up seeing it 10 times in the theater. <laughs> okay. uh, and, you know, it's right. I was uh, um, 10 years old at the time. I was right in my wheelhouse. In fact, probably most everybody in my generation was affected by it. I saw it. A uh, long time uh, um, people in Akron will remember the Akron Square Cinema 6 is where I saw it uh, 10 times that summer and, and many times since. Uh, and, it, you know, it's a movie that wasn't expected to do very well. Uh, 20th Century Fox really didn't have much faith in it. Uh, in fact, George Lucas did something that was groundbreaking at the time and, and, and in hindsight the best business decision probably in the history of Hollywood, he waived his normal writer and director fees and just got a, a, a mere 175000 which sounds like a lot, but that wasn't a lot uh, for a director fee. But he got 40% of the merchandising rights and the sequel rights. Uh, and at the time, merchandising rights were pretty much nothing. No one cared and thought, oh, this movie's going to be a, a bomb and a disaster. And, of course, the opposite happened. And Lucas made more money on merchandising and toys than he did ever on the films. In fact, the money that he made through merchandising really allowed him to be an independent filmmaker for the rest of his career. Uh, and the, the sequels, although they were distributed by studios, he pretty much funded on his own. Joe, let me ask you this, and you mentioned the sequels. I really am interested in your answer on this. When they put together the original Star Wars movie, and then later, years later, it was called a new hope that was the plans to have all the sequels and the prequels and everything, or was this, let's see how this goes. And it was a one time only. And did they change on the run? Take us back to those times. That's a very fuzzy history, Ray, because um, in hindsight, Lucas sort of claims that he planned it all along. But the reality is that the studios certainly thought it was going to be a one offer. They wouldn't have given him the right to sequels and merchandising. Um, he did write a lengthy screenplay that was close to three hours, and obviously that was too long, so he decided to cut it and, and do it in, in a chunk of three. So in that regard, um, you, you, know, you could say that the, the, the original trilogy was planned. Whether he planned you know, eventually nine episodes or not, that's sort of revisionist history. Uh, I think the, the truth, as it usually does, lies somewhere in between. Okay, what about the cast, putting this cast together, Joe? What can you do? Take us behind the camera there. Well, the interesting one about uh, probably goes with Harrison Ford because Lucas did not want to use Harrison Ford. He didn't want to um, use the same people that he used in the past, and Harrison Ford had been in American Graffiti with him. So he didn't really want to use uh, any of those casts, although some of them did um, 
audition for Star Wars. And, and what's also interesting, too, is that um, Brian De Palma was making Carrie at the same time. And so George Lucas and Brian De Palma actually uh, combined their casting. And so they saw a lot of actors together that were reading for both Star Wars and Carrie, which is kind of interesting. But basically, no, he didn't want to use Harrison Ford, uh, but Harrison Ford was doing the readings in the, um, in the auditions. And eventually... He was just the bright guy for the role, and, and Lucas admitted to that. Uh, and, you know, there was a number of people that allegedly had turned it down. Some of the names that came up were James Kahn and Jack Nicholson and Robert De Niro, Burt Reynolds, all allegedly turned down the role of, of um, Kahn Solo. But, you know, it all worked out for Harrison Ford. No doubt about that. That's for sure. What else about Star Wars can you tell us, Joe? Well, some fun things uh, that kind of involved Lucas's friend Spielberg. Um, first of all, when, when Lucas had the rough cut of the film, he showed it to some of his director friends, and it wasn't finished yet. So in place of all the special effects, he actually cut in uh, like World War II dogfights and stuff that, that they show. So the film wasn't quite finished, but everyone, including Brian De Palma, said, this is the worst thing ever. And they just said, oh, man, poor George. Uh, Steven Spielberg was the only one who said, no, I think it's going to be the biggest movie of all time. And everyone sort of looked at Spielberg like, you're nuts, Steven. Uh, of course, he proved right. And another fun part about that is that Spielberg was making Close Encounters of the Third Kind at the same time. Mm-hmm. And so when Lucas visited him on set, they sort of were kind of saying, oh, your movie's going to be better than mine. No, no, your movie's going to be better than mine. They said, hey, let's put some money on it. And they exchanged points. And then when I say that, I mean deal points, so percentage of the profits. So Lucas gave Spielberg 2% of the profits on Star Wars, and Spielberg gave Lucas 2% on Close Encounters. And, of course, uh, Spielberg has been making money on Star Wars ever since. (laughs) Joe Fortunato with us, of course, a film professor. We go to film school each Friday at this time. He's looking at Star Wars. Joe, anything behind or the story pertaining to James Earl Jones and the selection of him as the voice of Darth Vader. Anything you can tell us on that side? Well, what's interesting about that is that George Lucas actually wanted Orson Welles to be the voice of Darth mm. Vader, um, but he thought it would be his voice would be too recognizable, um, and, and he probably was right. But uh, James Earl Jones uh, it initially didn't want credit um, because he wasn't sure how it would affect his career, and then on the subsequent. Uh, sequels, of course, he got screen credit as voice of Darth Vader. There you go. Star Wars today as we went to film school with Joe Fortunato. He joins us each Friday at this time as we go to school with Joe. And by the way, this lesson in school will be up at WAKR.net in just a couple of minutes as Stephanie work and get that up for you. Joe, great stuff this morning, my friend. Appreciate the time on Star Wars and in the film industry, and we'll reconnect next week, my friend. Thanks, Ray. All right, Joe Fortunato, film professor on Film School on the Ray Horner Morning Show. And I got to tell you, in regards to Star Wars, if you haven't jumped on that series yet that I just took in the first episode, Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney+, Plus. It's outstanding. If you're a Star Wars guy like I am, you'll absolutely love it. 25 minutes after 8, WAKR.